absolved by Peter Simple. In the dream, the huge dark figure which confronted me had an expression stern and authoritative, yet pitying and kindly. Its features familiar but subtly changing recalled now D. Wills, now Nell Dunn and Jeremy Sanford, now Dr. Edmund Leach, now Sergeant Dixon of Doc Green. Very well, I said at last. I confess. You're right. All the progressive thinkers are right. Everything I think and everything I write is due simply and solely to my obsessive hatred and envy of the young. When I'm not hating and envying the young, I'm drooling over my memories of the war, the happiest time of my life, since I not only experienced order and discipline, but could indulge to the full my wish to hurt and kill. Often, I'm lucky enough to be able to combine my only two remaining emotions at one and the same time. As I shamble through the streets in my shabby Macintosh and wide flapping trousers with turn-ups, I see the young in one another's arms, or bright-eyed with compassion for all mankind, separately rattling Oxfam collecting boxes. Stand to attention and say sir when you speak to an officer. I bark, unaware of my own breaking, papery, senile voice. The only answer is a pitying smile or a mocking Move over, Dad from boy or girl, with lips pursed and disapproving at blonde hair and miniskirts, though groaning inwardly with dismal lust. I pass on, brooding on declining moral standards, the ruin of England, and the collapse of Western civilization. I am, of course, an unconscious hypocrite. It's only my envy and hatred of the young which makes me pretend to think Beethoven a better composer than Paul McCartney. It's only my envy and hatred of the young which makes me pretend to believe Soviet Russia is a more dangerous threat than South Africa, Rhodesia, Portugal or Greece to the remaining liberties of this country. It's only my envy and hatred of the young which makes me pretend to fear the advance of technology, of universal urbanization, of a scientific attitude to birth, love, death. In short, to fear the glorious and happy future the young will inherit. It's only my... But the compound figure, which now seemed to have put on the infectious smile of Sir Hugh Green, was already raising an absolving and progressive 
hand. I woke as winter dawn flared at the windows and an early jetliner passed with its rending scream across the sky. <laughs>